What is going on guys, Predator 4 5 h and welcome back to my channel. Today we begin the video with a short clip, a short lesson if you will. Uh, how not to torpedo 101. So myself and this Omaha are trying to move into position to torpedo this New Mexico. He is 6 kilometers away, I'm slowing down, trying to turn to get my um, torpedo tubes to bear and my warning goes off. Now I should have been angry at this point. Um, I should have been really angry, but I was actually just laughing at the sheer stupidity of uh, what that guy did. Anyways, <laughs> with that over, let's head off to today's feature film, if you will. Alright ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Uh, hopefully we're not going to get torpedoed in this battle. Uh, it is a replay. So okay, we're not going to get torpedoed by friendly in this replay. Um, I'm in the tier 7 Negato. Mm. Another one of the infamous, infam uh, excuse me, infamous members of the terrible tier 7 club. Or so some people would have you believe. Uh, but because it's a replay, um, I'm going to sort of cut it now and skip ahead as things get interesting. Because unfortunately, most of the enemy team initially goes the other way. So there's a lot of uh, just nothing from us. So I'm going to cut it here and uh, I will see you back when we get to our first bit of interestingness. All right, and you join us back as we are about to hand out an award a very special award and that award goes to this Furutaka and his award is Silly Goose of the Match and uh, now we got some destroyers and some things you know decent distance away from us but there's nothing we really gonna engage but he gets this very special award because not only does he run into the Colorado one of our battleships he then proceeds to run into me as well. I've seen him, so I'm trying to slow down, but we do still make uh, contact. So he's managed to run into two of uh, his battleships, or starters. And then <laughs> he goes and gets himself hit by a torpedo. <laughs> well done to you, sir. Um, so we're just watching this thing. We're getting ready to turn over, and uh, I kind of... Again, it's quite a close miss. Um, coming in in second place for uh, the Silly Goose of the Match award is the Miyogi behind me. I'm going to look at him in a few moments. There we go. And he just got hit by the torpedoes that came straight through where we were. They were spotted completely. So congratulations to the two of you. <laughs> Um, you're both very special, and Mommy loves you. So, I'm going to now cut it here again, and I will rejoin just before um, the sort of the main action of this replay begins, just to talk a little bit about the ship. Okay, and welcome back. We are approaching the enemy's base quickly, and soon we will be in some action. Uh, this battle has been going on now for roughly seven minutes. I have not fired my guns yet. Um... And as you can see, no hits, no nothing. So obviously you can see why I've cut out the first six, seven minutes of this uh, replay. But anyways, let's have a quick talk about the Nagato or Nagato or however the hell you pronounce it. So you've gone from having 12 14-inch guns on the Fuso to eight 16-inch guns on the Nagato. So it's a very similar situation as it was from uh, New Mexico to Colorado. Uh, this ship is also generally quite uh, hated amongst the community. And I haven't had too many matches in it at this point. I think this game was actually my third match in it. Um, what I did discover in the first two matches is that this thing... And we've taken our first shots at the Colorado, but we led too much. As you can see, still getting familiar with these guns. Because also like the Colorado, going up a caliber means a... a and a sort of a higher shell velocity, 
and you tend to lead a little bit more than you need to. Um, but what I learned in the first few matches, uh, this thing is made out of, I don't know, what's, this is made out of gasoline. This thing catches fire really easily. I had one, I think my first match in it, um, we get 9,100 damage for four hits on the Colorado, and that's our first damage of the match. But I had one match where I spent the entire game on fire. Um, dive bombers came in at me first, I put the fire out because uh, I set three fires. Um, then a cruiser hit me with a single shell and missed the rest of his salvo. That set me on fire again, and I was just burned to death. So with this ship, I don't know why, and I don't know if I'm, it's just in my mind, but it really does seem to catch fire and burn a lot more than other ships. So we've taken the lead on this uh, Cleveland, and we get two hits for nearly 7,000 damage. And there we go, speak of the devil, we are on fire again. Um, but judging by what people have said on the forums, um, they say that this is a really good brawler ship. It's almost uses an American style of gameplay, you know, getting closing the distance and because um, your citadel is quite small, although there we go, someone found it, so I uh, don't know, doesn't seem that small when you're playing it because people find it fairly often. Um, but you've got decent speed, not great, I thought it was more like 28, and I'm sure it was in CBT, but maybe I'm just remembering incorrectly. Uh, but you can do 25 knots, so similar speeds to the Fuso. You've got quite a good rudder shift time, um, and you're you know, you're quite maneuverable, especially once you've got the 20% boost uh, to the rudder shift time installed, which I like to run on all my battleships simply because aircraft carries on oh, are such a pain these days. Um, so it's it's quite maneuverable and decent armor, good, good amount of hit points, uh, 65,000, so you've got 15,000 more than a fully upgraded uh, Colorado. I don't know if your armor is as good because the stats are not all that easy to find in-game. I'm sure you can find them on websites, but I haven't double-checked yet. As for your guns, as I said, 16-inch guns, 8 of them. 31-second reload, so your reload is faster than a Colorado. And here we fired at that Aoba. We get a Citadel hit, another target hit, and that's enough to give us devastating strike. So like the Colorado... If you hit targets with these guns, if you find their citadels, these guns are very, very devastating. Um, all in all, again, my impressions so far of the ship is is really not that bad. Uh, is it great? No, I don't think it's particularly great. Um, is it better than the Colorado? Yes, I think it's better than the Colorado. Its guns seem more accurate. Um, you have longer range on your guns, you're faster, you actually, um, I don't, maybe it's just a feeling, but you feel more maneuverable, but uh, sometimes I don't feel that way, but other times I do. Um, your reload is faster. The only thing the Colorado really seems to have that is better than the, the Nagato is um, its anti-aircraft capabilities seem better. So, yeah, that's a good thing, but good anti-aircraft guns don't make a fun ship. Uh, and those shells, two of them land in front, two of them behind, so kind of spliced horribly. Um, but yeah, so the second salvo manages to land and we do 8,000 damage. So, and, and that's another thing, even if you don't get citadels, I still find that you get pretty decent damage from these guns. Uh, so all in all, I certainly think it's a much more enjoyable ship to play than the Colorado. Just the extra speed, you know, what feels like better accuracy on the guns. Um, also the fact that it's sort of a brawler, which is it is nice because I, I kind of just like that style of gameplay now with battleships and I have to resist the urge in like, for example, my North Carolina to charge in because that armor I don't think is all that great. and charging in and that and getting 120,000 silver repairable is quite painful. So we've now fired at this Nagato who's 10.5 kilometers away. We get three hits for uh, nearly 3,800, so we over-penetrated. Um, 
but we're just waiting for other guns to reload and we'll fire them again. We're still, you know, we're trying to keep our, our arm angled, we're trying to move around. The enemy have uh, capped like half our base, so I was getting quite worried at uh, this point. We're trying to cap their base, but obviously we're being uh, constantly uh, reset by the two battleships and the Cleveland that are here. Um, I'm focusing on these guys. You know, they're saying take the Cleveland first, which is probably a very good piece of advice. So we fire all four, four of our guns at the Colorado. He's on 30,000 health. Uh, we only get two hits, uh, but we do have 5,000, which is decent enough. So, you know, like the Colorado, also, you know, being having fewer guns does mean you're even more at the mercy of RNG than you feel in like a Fuso or uh, New Mexico. <coughs> And then we got Torps from the Atlanta. Thankfully, he waited until we were no longer in front of him. Uh, so we're going to take the lead again. We fire everything we have. And uh, thankfully, we do have some ships. Uh, we get a Citadel and five hits for, I didn't see how much damage it was, 29,000 or so. So we get Devastating Strike again. Uh, but thankfully, we do have uh, a War Spite and I think a Destroyer at our cap. They're not showing on the mini-map. But I think I'd, at some point I do look back and see these in there. So we are at least resetting them as well. Um, and, you know, things are quite even at the moment. It's a fight to the death at the cap zones. So we fire again at the Nagato. And these shells are looking pretty good. And we get another Citadel in three hits for 27,000 damage. Take him down to 2,300, which gives our cruisers some time to finish him off make it easy for them. So now the Cleveland's at 16 kilometers. Uh, it's a bit, a bit difficult to hit at these ranges, obviously. Uh, cruisers are quite maneuverable. Uh, you'll have no problem, but we're going to try anyway. And all we can do is hope for the best, fire the two front guns, and uh, you know, things are looking good now for our team. And we watch the shells drop, and we get another Citadel hit and high caliber so fire the rear gun and see if we can finish him off uh, but I don't think we get there in time uh, I think these ones miss and then someone else finishes them off so this really isn't a bad ship either um, still not you know quite as fun as the Fuso uh, but definitely more fun than, and there the Cleveland goes, definitely more fun in my opinion than the Colorado. And especially if you put, um, you know, the upgrades to your secondary guns, as well as focus on perks for your captain to the secondary guns, you can actually uh, get the secondary gun range up to about 17, uh, kilo uh, 17 kilometers, excuse me, 7 kilometers, which is pretty decent indeed. So let's head off and have a look at the results and how we did. We got 33 target hits, a 1 incapacitation, destroyed 2 enemy ships, 4 citadel hits and assisted in base capture once. For 328,634 silver, 3,677 research, 184 convertible research, we got devastating strike twice and we got high caliber. So moving on to the team scores, as you can see, we came first place on our team with 2,451 points. Uh, <laughs> it was about 800 points ahead of second place. As for the enemy team, their Nagato came first with 732 points. So obviously it can't be that bad if uh, the top place t uh, player on each team is in the Nagato. And then moving on to the detailed results, you can see that we did... 130,554 armor piercing damage from our 37 uh, shells fired and 35 penetrations. So, not a bad performance, especially as I said, considering this was, I think, my third match. Um, still not quite as fun as Fuso, I don't think. Uh, but it's not that bad, and it's not. It doesn't give you that same feeling as Colorado, where it's just like, oh, I just want to kind of free XP my way past this. Of course, if you have uh, the means to do so. Um, but yeah, I mean, decent speed, good armor, good enough guns. 130,500 damage in my third game is not bad at all. Um, and I kind of look forward to playing this some more and 
eventually working my way through to the Amagi. I think that will be even more fun with its 31 or 30 knot top speed or something and uh, an extra two guns, you know, 10, 16 inch, gu inch guns. Nothing to be ashamed about. But anyways, that is it from me. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button down below and maybe consider subscribing for more World of Warships content as well as War Thunder and a few other things that I throw into the mix from time to time. Also, be sure to check the description link down below for links to my Facebook and my Twitter pages. And you guys can follow me there as well if you so desire. Uh, but yeah, that is it from me. Thank you very much for stopping by. This is Predator458 signing off and I'll see you guys next time.